1974, the year that brought us the Nixon impeachment, the Rubik's Cube, and the DEA. But more importantly, 1974 gave us the legendary cannabis breeder, Short Brooks. While he wasn't born a breeder, you can say he was born to become one as we go beyond the grow. Hey there, I'm Nick Morin, creator of Canna Cribs, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Grow, the series where we dig a little deeper into the lives and stories of the amazing people we meet while producing Canna Cribs. So kick back, light up a joint, and join us as we explore the stories that got the top cannabis growers and breeders to where they are today. Canna Cribs shows you how they do it. Now, let's show you why they do it in Beyond the Grow. Beyond the Grow is brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have five categories today we want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Nutrients by Hydroponic Research, IPM by Lost Coast Plant Therapy, Packaging by Dispo, Consulting by Canna Cribs Horticulture Consulting, and Cultivation by Premier Tech. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this show and helping us bring more knowledge to the world. If you want to support Beyond the Grow, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today. Short Brooks was born in the Netherlands in 1974. And while the country is now known as a bastion of progressive thinking on drug policy, believe it or not, it wasn't always that way. When Short was born in 1974, cannabis was illegal and the country was facing an addiction epidemic. This led to the decriminalization of cannabis in 1976, a policy that has proved effective against addiction and was pretty popular with Dutch citizens overall. It was at this time you would be able to find a two-year-old short playing in the field of cannabis on his family's property. The gardens were his stepdad's, and though short was very young, the tranquility he felt among plants was only the beginning of a lifelong love for cannabis. Unlike many people in countries where cannabis is prohibited, short didn't grow up with the negative stigma that often surrounds the plant. He was never told that the plant was bad or that it would make him a burnout. He was surrounded by hash and regular seasonal mushroom hunting trips with the family, which kept him intrigued in the lifestyle that his parents had. It's only natural that Short's love of cannabis would shape his future forever. In 1982, Short and his mother moved to England, where he spent his formative years from the ages of 8 to 24 years old. After that, Short went back home to the Netherlands in 1997 and became involved with Eddie of Amsterdam's Cannabis College, which was a collective of cannabis growers and breeders sharing their knowledge about cannabis cultivation. Short quickly became an active part of this community, overseeing the build out of the collective's new grow space. It was around this time that he began helping with germination testing. From there, Short began to work on developing the genetic bank of the collective, but eventually adding new strains, running pheno hunts, and selecting the plants that were fit in tip-top shape for production. It was truly a haven for cannabis enthusiasts. And to further illustrate the difference in attitudes between the Netherlands and anti-cannabis countries, offering a cannabis resource library and garden tours, these tours emphasize education, teaching people with special info nights, focusing on issues such as medical cannabis and the USA's war on drugs, particularly the Green Prisoner Release, which was focused on helping people incarcerated for cannabis crimes. Short's love of the plant kept him moving forward as he continued to work with Flying Dutchman and eventually managing grow projects all over the world including one of the first ones in sub-Saharan Africa, where cannabis laws and challenges were a little different than they were in the Netherlands at that time. In Africa, at only 27 years old, Short and his partner Mercedes lived in a village hours from the nearest paved road under the shadow of a massive volcano. Short managed a 40-acre cannabis grow under a government license, 
where he grew from seeds and did selections of F1 hybrids to find a phenotype suited to the humidity of the region. In 18 months, Shore whittled down selected crosses from over 400,000 plants down to four mold resistant and high quality phenotypes. Being in one of the wettest places on earth, it was a really hard lesson for Shord in how those plants evolved with our immediate environment. The crops were being attacked by hundreds of different pests and pathogens. But it wasn't all about the cannabis project here. While building out the grow, Shord was involved in other local efforts, such as helping set up a clean water program, installing mosquito netting in the village, and helping build a medical center for locals to receive treatment they couldn't get before. Everything in nature over there seemed like it was out to get you. There were a lot of endemic diseases in the local communities. Diseases including malaria, typhoid, and cerebral meningitis, or even combinations of all three ravaged their way through the communities according to Shore. Most locally available drugs were out of date, so they made medicines available locally. There was a fluid and challenging dynamic between traditional medicines and Western medicines, with many, believe it or not, witch doctors in the local village also treating the sick with traditional methods. One morning, on his 27th birthday, Short actually woke up to find a real-life literal witch trial on the doorstep of the chief's compound. Three women were made to drink a poison while swearing on the Bible. If they died, they were guilty. Luckily, all three of them survived. But once again, the law operates a bit differently in sub-Saharan Africa, and there were some wrinkles at the local level too. Add in atrocious weather and some novel cannabis diseases, and it's even more incredible that Shord was able to scale up to 10,000 clones a day before, unfortunately, it all went to hell. The team at Dispo leans heavily on their culture and core values. They believe that fostering and encouraging both the personal and professional growth of their team only enhances the personalized touch they give to each and every one of their clients, customers, and partners. Since the inception of Dispo, the customer first ethos has remained the foundation of its success. Their old school service philosophy combined with the golden rule has helped in catapulting many of the country's best known cannabis brands to success. Whether you are an established brand or looking to build a new brand, Dispo is here to help. This industry born company specializes in custom packaging, custom branding, and being a resource to help their partners thrive. Dispo, old school service. In 2004, Short's African Grow Operation fell victim to local and national authorities as Short was held at gunpoint and could only watch as the authorities beat and abused the villagers who once worked in the operation. In the coup de grace, it was during the day they had a team member racing to the site with their stamp paperwork from the government as the military actively rounded everyone up. The military set fire to everything they pulled up more than a million plants in 24 hours. All his hard work was gone. They poured gasoline into all the drying buildings and generator houses and set it all on fire. At that point, Shord knew it was probably a good time to get out of Africa and planned on just doing that until the authorities confiscated his passport and refused to return it. With few options left, Shord had to think quick on his feet. The chief of police's office was holding his passport. Fortunately for Shord, one of the officials handling their side of the case suffered from narcolepsy. No, they couldn't read minds, they fell asleep. And as soon as he nodded off, Shord entered the office and offered the man $200 for the return of their passports. A few anxiety-filled hours later, they were on a plane safely going back home. After that trip, Shord went to South America doing the exact same kind of cannabis work that he was doing in Africa, which was working with local authorities to build and operate a fully licensed pilot program for medical cannabis. And unfortunately, the results were similar with the Federales shutting down the grow. 
Once again, Short found himself an unwelcomed guest in his host country and was forced to evacuate. The army had posted at the gate and one of their watches had broken radio silence. They knew something was up. They quickly evacuated with 40 people and hiked six miles to a safe spot that they had identified the previous year. Short went back with a couple of the guys to check on the dried flour in the barns the next morning after being told it was safe to do so. After turning a few hundred boxes, he went to take a nap in the hammock. That was when the army came in heavy and fast, and they grabbed what they could and ran with the army one minute behind them. As they frantically crossed the river, they saw the army at the top of the cliffs just behind them. They tracked the same route as the night before and got away for the second time within 24 hours. Given the choice of riding a donkey down the mountain or taking a four-wheeler the longer route, Short chose the ATV, which he assumed would get him out faster than the donkey. However, the normally four-hour trip down the mountain ended up taking four entire days, as Short had to repeatedly backtrack due to roadblocks set up to find them. Dressed in the local clothing style, Short was instructed by locals helping him to keep his head down and act like a mute, which was a tall order as he was around a foot taller than all the local people around him. All of this was an attempt to avoid detection by the Federales, which he successfully did once again. A short time later, he managed to hop on a plane and head safely home. Shore didn't stay in the Netherlands for long, as you might have guessed, and in 2008, the same year Obama was elected, Short packed his bags and moved to the United States of America. Short and his partner Mercedes decided on Northern California, where Short worked to build out a 99 plant medicinal grow. Short spent five years in Tahama and Shasta counties, planting 99 plant gardens, building light depth houses, and partnering with other local growers. Sounds like a dream. Short fell in love with California cannabis. This is actually where he mentioned the real breeders were, up in the hills. Most of the seeds that originally came over to the Netherlands in the 80s were actually bred and hybridized right here in the States. Short made several high CBD and THC crosses during his time there, mostly working on Hindu Kushes, Headband, OG Kushes, Chemdog, and Ringo's Gift, high CBD breeds. Short eventually built out and operated 12 medical grows with partners during his five to six years in Northern California. NorCal life was good for Short for a number of years. However, as you might have guessed it, in 2014, amid dropping prices, pressure from county officials, season desist orders, and hefty fines, many small farms in the area, including Shorts and his partners, were forced to shut down. Recreational cannabis was still a number of years away in California, so once again, Short was on the move, this time to Colorado. In Colorado, Short worked with John Carlos and Adam Dunn at their company, Medcana. Instead of growing, Short decided to focus his energy on writing applications and designing buildouts in Colorado, Nevada, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Illinois. There were a number of opportunities to learn here. One of the most valuable coming from Massachusetts when a large MSO, no names mentioned, put up a legal challenge against Medcana's two awarded applications meaning they lost out on two fully licensed opportunities that they were ready to pull the trigger on. While this was frustrating and disheartening, Short realized the value of the work he'd been doing. The real problem though, beyond industry bureaucracy, was that Short didn't have the same kind of passion he had when he was in the garden. And after a year in Colorado, Short knew he needed to be back with the plants. During a Facebook exchange with Scott Reach from Rare Dankness, shout out Scott, definitely check out his Can of Cribs episode and Beyond the Grow episode on our channel. This allowed Short to do exactly that. Scott told Short about a new cannabis operation starting in Wilcox, Arizona. Short was intrigued and before he knew it, he was on a plane to visit the old greenhouse vegetable grow that would eventually be known as the Farm and Sunday Goods. Such a small world, right? You've probably seen the Sunday Goods and Farm Canna Cribs episode we did with Short. Now the picture is starting to come clear. 
But there is only one word for the existing infrastructure at that location, bad. The main issue was the lack of cooling. We're talking about the Arizona desert. It gets pretty hot out there. The greenhouses were fitted with passive vents for cooling and nothing more. The setup was not gonna work for cannabis, but it eventually could, it just took a little bit of hard work. Over the course of the next 18 months, Shorg went to work evicting the rats, retrofitting the derelict greenhouses, and with 320,000 square feet of canopy space, the largest licensed facility in the USA at the time, it was no simple task. Shored essentially started from scratch, revamping and updating the cooling and irrigation systems, installing light deprivation systems, installing lighting, laser leveling the greenhouse floor, and just getting the place ready to grow more of the plants Shored loved to grow. The team at Disbo leans heavily on their culture and core values. Whether you are an established brand or are looking for some help building a new brand, Disbo is here to help. Dispo's collaborative approach to solving challenges will deliver on time, every time, with flexible pricing options always available. In addition to custom branding, they also offer logistical services worldwide to get your custom products to your door without delay. Dispo's team of experts want to know how their team can help you deliver your brand message more effectively. That's why when you call, you speak directly with a team member based right here in the USA. This industry born company specializes in custom packaging, custom branding, and being a resource to help their partners thrive. Dispo, old school service. That's not to say the process wasn't stressful. Short was learning new things every day. But instead of two or three things to lose sleep over, Short says he had dozens of things in his head to keep him up at night. The stress was helpful though, as it helps Short laser focus on the project at hand and doing the job correctly, checking and verifying every detail again and again. For cannabis, this was one of the first large scale Venlo glass greenhouse projects anywhere in the world at the time. During this time, Short worked closely with the team in the early stages of the development of the brand Sunday Goods, a brand designed to normalize cannabis for everyone. As cultivation director, Short spent two years developing the program with the professional tomato growers that had partnered with the project. This world-class team of greenhouse professionals would now start to run day-to-day -day operations at the highest level. Short moved to the genetic development side of the facility where he began breeding for the farm and Sunday goods. Helping to develop and curate the strains the farm would cultivate and Sunday goods would eventually distribute. Short was happy with his work at the farm and Sunday goods, but continued to charge ahead at different opportunities. It was on one of these consulting jobs that Short met Autumn Carsey, which is another consultant in the space who's working on the same project. You might be familiar with Autumn. She's the host of season three of Deep Roots, and I actually got connected to Autumn through Short. It's such a small industry. Short and Autumn became really good friends and were able to bond over the fact that they were developing protocols and SOPs for the operations. But after that, they kind of lost all say. If a grower chose to ignore their advice, all they could do is sit back and watch. So over the course of a couple projects, they joked and said, hey, we should totally start our own operation one day. As you might have guessed it, they did. Those jokes became serious. And the more they talked about it, um, the more that they bonded over a vision for their own operation and the industry as a whole. They saw an importance in craft cannabis and the value of not being the biggest operator out there. I honestly don't see a lot of that these days. They dreamt of building fully sustainable organic systems, permaculture, and the freedom to control their vision beyond what they could do as just consultants for other people's grows. The hunt for property sent Autumn and Short up and down the California coast. After considering a number of properties, Short and Autumn both settled on Lake County, a friendly county with a relatively easy licensing process. The pair bought several properties in the area, not just for the purpose of growing on all of that land, but to slowly develop the farms naturally as the company grew and became successful organically. 
In addition to land, Short and Autumn also purchased a 67,000 square foot processing facility. One of the only sites in the county able to run a large scale drying and processing business. But in addition to processing their own product, they wanted to give back to the community. They did this by offering local farmers their services as an affordable option for processing, including processing services such as fresh frozen cannabis storage, drying and curing, trimming packaging, and pre-roll manufacturing. On top of all that, they're also offering manufacturing services, including commercial non-volatile water extraction, live rosin, packaging, and infused products all under the Alchemy 29 umbrella. I love that name. In addition to building out the farms and the processing and manufacturing center, they are also developing brands that showcase the company's commitment to the community, cannabis history, and genetics. Finally, Shord was able to once again do what he's passionate about, breeding and growing some of the best cannabis in the world. The Gene Finder Originals brand will develop cannabis varieties that blend both old and new genetics. With the goal of working towards building a wider range of cannabinoids into the plant's profiles and clean and simple terpene expressions that have specific qualities when used as medicine. Gene Finder Originals will work with like-minded breeders to help them showcase their work and genetics in the marketplace. Short is working with his partner in life, Ava Erickson, on several breeding projects. The overall ethos is to work with like-minded breeders on small, worthwhile seed increases, both for production and for preservation. Some of these projects will involve older and sometimes newer land-raised varieties through targeted open pollination projects. If you want to reach out and you're interested, I can totally connect you. Just hit me up on LinkedIn or Instagram and I'll connect you to Short if you want to grow with him. The focus is to preserve the genetic diversity within these varieties and make them more widely available to consumers in seen form close to their original state. Another is to select towards single dominant terpene groups to stabilize clean profiles. The hope is to find effective medicinal combinations in the eventual F1 seed populations. Short is working with Ava and Ryan Kalamia on an R&D project with Hayes Valley Nursery. Now, this nursery supplies premium cannabis genetics to licensed California farms and is nested in the valley in Santa Cruz County, where the Hayes varietal was first developed by the Hayes brothers. Some of the same genetics that Short was lucky enough to work with 25 years before in Amsterdam with Eddie and the Flying Dutchman. The other line from Autumn and Short is called the Smugglers and Smugglers Reserve brands. These brands will offer scaled up versions of all the products that were successfully created under the Gene Finder Originals brand. It's a brand that tells the story of cannabis history worldwide and the people who helped move illicit seeds and products to shape the landscape we see today. We would not be here without them and Short is paying homage to that. So what's next for Short Brooks? Who can tell, but the smart money is that he will continue to excel and push this cannabis plant forward. Whether as a consultant for other growers, a breeder, or as a co-owner operator with Autumn Carsey and the Alchemy 2019. No matter what he's doing, Short's love for the plant is all the drive he needs. What does he see for the future of cannabis? He'd like to see more growers keep it small and focused on craft flower, craft products. To Short, Cannabis is something to be protected, to be treasured, and to be cherished. Beyond the Grow is brought to you by the top brands in the game. We have five categories today we want to highlight to help you elevate your craft. Nutrients by Hydroponic Research, IPM by Lost Coast Plant Therapy, Packaging by Dispo, Consulting by Canacribs Horticulture Consulting and Cultivation by Premier Tech. Thank you to these partners for helping us create this show and helping us bring more knowledge to the world. If you want to support Beyond the Grow, head on over to the link in the description or go to growershouse.com and check out these industry leaders today.